Welcome everybody, my name is Jane and I hail from Australia where we are celebrating the autumn equinox. So we know that in the Northern Hemisphere, you guys are celebrating the spring equinox, which is symbolic of your Easter time. So I wanted to give a presentation, about 10 minutes or so, just on the cosmic meaning of Easter. And I, what I have presented for you today is the Easter egg, the mathematics of the egg of creation but I wanted you to notice that there is a central cross here, which I believe is in the golden ratio. But this is composed by compass and set square, so we call it Euclidean geometry. But it's an approximation to the golden ratio, whereas I want to make a distinguishment between this design, which is an old Russian mathematical geometry from over 100 years ago, to something that looks like a witch's hat, but when we slice this tonal harmonic tower by Victor Schauberger, we end up with the slice of an Easter egg, an egg shape with a central cross. And I believe that this is the true golden ratio, divine proportion cross. So this is Euclidean, this is non-Euclidean. So stay with me for the next 10 minutes, just so that I can explain the cosmic meaning of where Easter comes from. We know that Easter was a pagan ritual from the time of a goddess called Oystra. And um, we, our word estrogen comes from this. It's all about fertility, rebirth, renewal, fecundity. And around the time of Charlemagne, around 777 AD, Charlemagne conquered all those pagan lands that worship the wind and the water and the trees, the true nature religion. So he conquered the Germanic paganism and the Norse Vikings. and that became replaced by a new Christianity in a wave and they adopted the, the old Christmases and Easter celebrations and all the summer solstices into our modern day world. So this was the time when the ancient pagan springtime in the Northern Hemisphere coincided with the resurrection of Jesus. It just happened that these were around the same time. So we can't help think about the, the symbolism of the egg, which is about creation, the harmonics, of rebirth and there's other different shapes as well this is a different shape and I was just um going down my creek I live by a beautiful uh creek in the rainforest and I've, in the floods we just had massive floods and something was washed up just last fortnight and it was the egg and I couldn't open it up but I managed to get a, a butter knife and I opened it up and inside I could see what's what's how they created this but I wanted you to take note notice of this hemisphere this half a sphere is symbolic of this half circle here. So let, let's um, go through the creation because, because we're talking about Christianity, um, the, after Charlemagne conquered the, half the world, um, the medieval manuscripts around that time started showing Jesus as the constructor of the universe with using the compass and the arcs to um, create the world because we're gonna create what's called the egg in four arcs. This is the four arc construction. <clears throat> and often in medieval manuscripts in the Bibles, you will see beautiful yoni shaped vesica pieces. So that shape in the middle there is called the mandala through which Jesus is born through, which, we're, which is part of our ancient cosmic ancestry. So I decided to study the mathematics of this. So um, there's an old Russian diagram over a hundred years ago we want, to, we want to analyze the cross in the middle of the egg, the long axis versus the short axis. And it's in a ratio called 1 is to 1.27, which is called the golden root. So um, if you, if for those that want the mathematics, just take a screenshot of that. I'll show some of it on the board here. But instead of looking at the egg upright, so um, because we can see that there's an, if you look at the cross in the middle here, the long axis to the short axis, the cross is upside down, but we're going to reverse it. So I did, so I've um, drawn the egg upside down. So I took it from this diagram, so I redid it. And we know from the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, um, where Jack goes up once, um, he, he, the, the giant is sleeping where he finds a bag of gold. And then on his second trip, he goes up again, he comes back with the goose that laid the golden egg, which is what all this is about. And we're going to turn this diagram upside down so we get the cross upright. And on the third trip, Jack goes up, the giant wakes up and he comes down. He's being chased and he has a harp. And, and what does the harp represent? 
in, in harmonic geometry. That's about sonic codes of creation. So, um, yeah, the harp is all about the, the ultimate healing in the future is all about frequency and vibration. So that was symbolized by the, the golden harp. Yes, yeah, so um, let's have a quick look at this geometry. So we're going to start off with a circle. It's called the unit square. So you draw a square one by one. So that means these sections here, is, that's a half, that's a half, and that's a half. So everything is half, half, and one. So that's called the unit circle. So when, so when we put our compass here in the middle, you put your compass here on the middle, we, we move the arc, and you can draw this circle going around. But we also need to do a couple more arcs to get it right. So um, knowing the unit circle, I need, I need to draw a line from this point here right through the point there where the circle touches the square. So, when, so I've drawn my semicircle, which is half the sphere, but we wanted, so we've drawn one arc, we want to draw two more arcs to these points from there to there, but to get it right, we have to extend this line. So whatever the diameter was, so from here to there, that's the one unit. I take the same unit and from here, I draw the, um, I can draw this arc down to the point A from G to A. And then I put the compass on G and I can draw the arc from D to B. Um, another way, if you didn't use the arcs of the compass, you could measure the distance from there to there you can measure from G to D. So I'm measuring G, O, D. And that's that distance. I take the one unit and I can say, I'm going to go through the point there. And I mark the point A. I put the point, I put the same distance there and I get that distance. So that means we've got one arc of the semicircle, two of these arcs based on the radii of one. But now we have to, from this point, which is V, um, we've got, we put the compass from here to there, which is the same as that distance. We need to know this distance. So we, we put the compass from there to there and we draw the arc. So what we have is a very interesting approximation to the golden ratio. So the only way to calculate it, we need to know this distance GV and we need to know the distance AV. Once I've calculated those distance, I can measure the, dis the vertical axis, which is LOVE. And then we're going to divide it by the horizontal axis, G-O-D, which is really interesting because this is the origin of the, the Christian cross and it's embedded in the egg of creation. So the only way to measure this distance here, I need to know this distance. So we, I'm going to take this triangle. If I could shade that all in, we know that that's a half, that's a half. What's this half? So we use Pythagoras' theorem. We can call this this distance x it's the unknown but thanks to pythagoras's theorem we know that a half squared plus a half squared equals this hypotenuse we get 0 0.707 so i've marked 0 0.707 we know this distance now we want to know um this distance over here um again by using pythagoras's theorem we can calculate this is this distance is 0.293 well even if we don't use Pythagoras' theorem, we can say that this distance, EV, this distance, EV, is the same, equals AV, equals BV, they're all the same. But this distance really is the long distance 1, take away the 0 0.707. So 1, take away the 0 0.707, gives us 0.293. So now we know all the important measurements. So now I can calculate what love is. L-O-V-E equals... A half plus a half is one, because that's the unit circle, plus the 0.293. So now I know that L-O-V-E is 1.293. I'll underline that. And it just happens to be very close to a number called the golden root. The golden root is, is the number that is related to what number gives us the golden ratio of phi or 1.618. So that... So the square root of the golden ratio is what number multiplied by itself gives us that. So we know that it's 1.272. So 1.272 times itself gives us 1.618. So this is called the golden root. It's symbolized by the square root of phi. So now we know that this distance of one, because we know this distance is one, but we didn't know that distance. So this whole rectangle is one is to 1.272 approximated golden root. 
but that's the closest we can get to it with a compass and set square. But what we really want to do now is we want to find a better representation of the cosmic egg. And this comes back to the work of Victor Schauberger and my friend Callum Coates, who I'm going to show you a video of. Um, he's, he translated all of Victor Schauberger's work. And it's really extraordinary work because it's really high level. It's kind of, if you want to really advance your consciousness, you really need to study these masters. So I've had the honor of meeting and interviewing Callum Coates. We've taught together at Sunshine Coast University. So he's my mathematician. If I need, he's my go-to if I need to know something in mathematics. But what he's developed is a tonal tower. So you've got to visualize this shape in three dimensions. Kind of visualize like a witch's hat. So imagine we had this, this shape here. Um, it looks like a disc, right? But it's a plastic disc. But imagine if I could take this top point and pull it right up to a point. So I pull it right up to a point. So the curve, and imagine this plane goes out forever, that goes forever. So the hyperbolic curve is this shape here, and there's another curve there. There's two curves. And another way of visualizing in 3D is just ignore the cup. But if you look at this curve at the base of the cup, imagine that this point here goes to a point. So I want you to visualize this in 3D. And um, what it is, it's the hyperbolic curve. There's a formula called y equals 1 on x. And what that means is n times 1 on n equals 1. So if you take any number like 6, 6 times its reciprocal, 1 on 6 equals 1. This is all about the as we go infinitely large and we take the reciprocal, we go infinitely small. And the large time the small always makes unity consciousness. So n times 1 on n equals 1. This was the cosmic formula for Pythagoras um, that developed what he called the monochord. So that's that equation there. And we're going to do something. Callum's going to show that when we slice this tonal tower, this harmonic tonal tower, at the point, at the, here's a circle here of one, and this is a circle here of a half. When we do a critical slice at a critical angle, we end up with two axes. And I believe that this is in the golden ratio. So let's have a look at what um, Callum Coates is saying. I've just got it. I'm going to put this on. Um, okay. So I'm just, I'm going to play this on um, my computer here. So let's have a little, let's click on the, the, the one. Hi everybody, I'm Jane, and we looked at the monochord in one dimension, how it made this exquisite hyperbolic curve, because sound is the key. And then Callum explained the tonal tower in three dimensions, and now he's going to show us sections or cuts or, or slices of the cone over here. Now on this one here, if I take a section from the blue line at the bottom to the blue line here, which is number two, uh, and I take a section through the cone, then I get an egg shape. And the egg here cannot be drawn with a compass uh, because the curvature is changing uh, from degree to degree or percentage of a degree to degree. And if I make another cut, for instance, from uh, five up here, on the main cone down to f down down to four, then I, uh, it gives me a grain shape. So all these are uh, shapes which are associated with life because the egg is the source of where life comes from, and so is the grain and all the food and some we eat. So those are in you know, some of those shapes are incorporated in this um, um, amazing three-dimensional mathematical model based on one over n times n equals one. And that's all on whole numbers. It's all based on music. Wow, I like that little bit at the end where he says it's all based on music. N times one on N equals one. So this is ancient knowledge at its best. And it's really amazing to know that as we celebrate Easter, because today is Palm Sunday, which is the resurrection, um, I just felt compelled to give a bit of insight into the magical meaning of all these different religions that we need to honour and respect all religions, because each religion is a gem, is a facet of the, the, the huge crystal that we call consciousness. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to explain that when we draw this hyperbolic curve, when we draw this formula y equals 1 on x, we it, it makes this curve that goes, it actually goes to, it never touches the x-axis or the y-axis. So these are called asymptotes at x equals zero, y equals zero. So this curve goes to infinity forever, and it goes to forever this way. 
But there's also another one, if we extend the axis out here, there's also another infinite curve here. And this has got to do with quantum physics. So the hyperbola or the hyperbolic curve is one there and there's another one in the other world. It's like the upside down world, which is like quantum physics is saying that we can be at two places at the same time. It's got to do with the quantum entanglement, how everything is interconnected. So it's saying if there's matter, there's also antimatter. And they're even saying that if we have a self, who you are or I am, we have another self in another dimension. So these formulas, even though it's two dimensional, y equals one on x, in 3D, it's um, the, the tonal tower. And it's quite deep and profound. And this knowledge needs to be shared. So I just wanted to make it as simple as possible. And that what we're really celebrating, we're not just celebrating the, 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 the origin of the Christian cross, which is an approximation Whereas the, the real cross is here. I believe that the, the true golden ratio cross is in that slice of the egg. And we need more mathematicians to come verify the true dimensions of that slice of the egg. But what, what it's all going back to, it's an honour of the mathematics in nature. Everything we need to know is in the sunflower, the 20, 2134 counter-rotating fields. And if, or if we just even look at any flower, like when you smell the rose, you're actually accessing all the codes of sacred geometry because the five-pointed star, the pent, which contains the golden cross, is in every cell, every protein of our body. So I hope you enjoyed this and um, um, celebrate your, your spring equinox or autumn equinox by just connecting with Mother Earth. Thank you for your time.